In this lesson, I'll talk about SAS. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain to me what SAS is and how it's used today. Uh, we'll discuss security risks surrounding SAS and understands that or understand that organizations must learn to accept that using SAS in some capacity is inevitable. What is SAS? SAS, if you recall from uh, one of the previous lessons when we talked about the cloud, is software as a service. Many organizations use this model to provide services that they can't provide themselves. What it does is it helps eliminate the need to run hardware or software on premise. Maybe you just can't run the software. Maybe uh, it's too expensive to purchase the hardware. Third parties run the software on their own infrastructure to provide the service for you. There is also hybrid models out there where we have some systems on campus and we have set or on premise and some uh, software out in the cloud. Um, Crash plan uh, is one of these type of services where we could actually put some data for local repository on campus or on premise and then uh, we can also back up to the cloud. It's a great model or a hybrid model. Some SaaS examples that you're probably familiar with. G Suite, which is uh, Google's offering, or Office 365, which is Microsoft, provides Exchange Online, uh, provides uh, Office, Word out in the cloud, um, Dropbox, Salesforce, Slack, DocuSign, and WebEx. These are all SaaS examples that you probably use quite often. Anywhere where you're going out to another provider that hosts some kind of software is a SaaS service. Many organizations use SaaS because of a number of different reasons. Let's talk about some of these. Lower total cost of ownership is a primary one. Um, organizations may have a hard time purchasing uh, hardware or software, um, fully blown hardware and software, and have somebody to manage it as well. Um, a good example of this is Exchange to Office 365, where running Exchange on-premise can be very costly, whereas moving to Office 365 may be a much lower cost. Lack of ex inexperienced or lack of experienced staff, I'm sorry, um, is one of those where um, organizations may choose to use SaaS. Um, maybe they're not a full-blown Windows system administrator or exchange administrator to manage Office 365, for example. Lack of technical resources, such as a data center, might be another one, uh, another reason why um, we may use SaaS applications. Deployment time. Setting up, for example, Exchange is a very difficult thing to do where um, we may be able to just click a couple buttons on Office 365 and get it to do what we want. Um, lack of knowledge of what can be accomplished with existing tools is another reason organizations use SaaS. For example, Slack. Slack versus Jabber versus uh, Skype for Business versus uh, really you name it any instant communication chat tool. Well, chances are that one of those tools is sanctioned and one of those tools is not sanctioned that your employees are using. Slack, for example, may be one of those that um, is an unsanctioned instant communication process, but it's a SaaS model. So people are using it because, you know what, I can buy it within five minutes and I can start using it within that time. SaaS has a lot of risks. Um, let's talk about some of these risks. First of all, the data. Whatever cloud provider that you go to or SaaS provider could sell your data. What if they lose the data? Or what, if ha what happens if they um, have a data breach? This could impact your information or your data. Um, what about if it's only in one place instead of in multiple places? Do you, under do you understand what your SaaS provider is offering? 
Um, what about risks based off of compliance? ITAR, for example, or FISMA compliance. Um, if you're doing government research, um, are all the servers of the SaaS provider hosted in the US or are they hosted overseas? This is something that you need to be concerned with if you're moving information back and forth between cloud providers. How is your data secured? What if the hosting provider or SaaS provider um, has poor security practices and your data is leaked somehow? Another risk is instability or flawed business models. Um, SaaS providers usually uh, do updates without notice. They may have service outages. They may remove features or add features that you weren't intending. Um, or perhaps they ha just have a flawed business architecture or a flawed um, technical architecture as well, where they may have outages constantly. Competition between cl uh, cloud providers or SaaS providers may also force companies that you've gone into business with to go out of business. And what happens in that case? What if you have a lot of data with a service provider and you put all your eggs in one basket and you're unable to continue with that cloud provider? One of the other risks with SaaS applications is SaaS provider security. You don't always understand and you don't know how a SaaS provider is treating security unless you really ask. A lot of cloud providers are going to say that they are SOC 3 certified. Well, that usually just means that their data center is SOC 3 certified. Doesn't mean their business practices are. Okay, so you have to um, ask the service provider, ask the SaaS provider, um, what audits have you done lately on your data? What security audits have you performed? Can I perform my own security audits? What about the transparency of security vulnerabilities or the remediation of those vulnerabilities? Are they transparent about those? What about secure protocols? Does the cloud provider use or the SaaS provider use secure protocols um, to transfer data back and forth, for example? What about transferring data back and forth between their own systems? Um, what have been the results of their last compliance check, like their SOC compliance or their NIST compliance or FISMA or PCI or whatever compliance that you have that you need to make sure that you're in compliance with? We see this quite a bit with PCI. There's a lot of SaaS providers out there that uh, need to be PCI compliant. What incident response plan do they have and when was the last time they tested it? There's also organizational risk involved in going with a SaaS provider. You may be unfamiliar or restricted uh, by their terms of use. Uh, what if their terms of use say uh, or says that um, you can't own your own data or they own your own data? Um, what about long-term contracts that locks you into an organization? Shadow IT is another organizational risk where we see other departments within an organization bring up cloud providers because you can't offer or IT can't offer the thing that it needs. Paying for similar architecture that the, com the company already sanctions is uh, another risk that we may have where it's a financial risk because you're now paying for two providers or it's shadow IT. Understand that SaaS is inevitable. Going to a SaaS provider in some size, shape, or form is inevitable. For example, we have at the university, uh, we have a bunch of sanctioned SaaS applications. Office 365, Blackboard, Canvas, LastPass, uh, WebEx. Those are some examples of sanctioned um, SaaS applications. Some other unsanctioned SaaS applications that provide uh, shadow IT, 
organizational risk. Um, there's a lot of them too, such as Slack, Dropbox, Gmail, Carbonite, Crash Plan. All of those don't fit into our organization, but departments use them because of a variety of different reasons. Now, if you're an organization, you have to look at these and determine whether or not you actually need to provide these services to your end users or to your customers. How do we develop in an organization a response to SaaS? Um, we have to understand if you're in IT or in IT security, you have to understand what SaaS is and where it is. That is the most important thing. You have to understand where you have these SaaS applications so that you can start looking at them closely. Understand that you as IT security cannot control everything or you as senior management can't control everything. Meet your stakeholders, which are your internal customers, um, other organizations within the company, in the middle. Make sure that you're providing what the organization needs. Understand that the needs of others in the organization may be important. This is interviewing your stakeholders, for example. And is the use of unsanctioned SaaS because of lack of awareness, lack of features, or inadequate functionality in general. Understanding those will help you get a better understanding of how SaaS is used.